Welcome back, Brian. Thank you for having me, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. The court restraining order has not kicked in yet, so it's going to be here. That's it, soon. Welcome back to This Week in Money. This Week in Money. It's going to be back, Brian. Glad to have you here, Mark. How was your week? Week was very, very good. It was productive. You know, I yeah. uh, did some fake tanning, uh, went to the gym a few times, sent two or three emails, a lot of <laughs> NFT trading. Speaking of uh, work-life balance, JP Morgan steps in to save First Republic Bank. It becomes the second largest bank failure in U.S. history and the third mid-sized bank to fail in less than two months. They swooped in to seize First Republic, acquiring about $92 billion in assets and 200 and three billion dollars in loans oh no crazy times we live in you know it's gonna cost jp morgan 10 points billion to the fdic and then about 13 billion from the fdic is gonna go into this deal do we think jp morgan's getting too big though brian Ooh, i don't know that was always the big concern when all these biggest banks went bank down. getting bigger we've been with jp morgan chase for a while i i love is that who we them. use we use jp okay. morgan yeah okay cool yeah good to know chase. good to know we're, we're we're safe but i do have to say you know they were you know they're not exactly the you know the, the brave child you know the the sexiest child i mean they are a big bank so mm -hmm. we have to be worried about the big banks getting bigger and what about our small town what about the small mom and pop banks what is going on to them you know why don't we just give first republic to like navy federal credit union my favorite bank you know you sh we should we should we, inquire about we, banking with the navy credit credit union. we should we, we should. should i'm sure let's you're do it let's yeah. do it it is a great credit union uh supports our veterans and uh you know i have this red debit card from them i put that on the table fiddlesticks oh everyone gets wet uh there was a funny tweet about uh Without SVB or First Republic, there's no banks that'll actually be lending to founders with a heavy stock compensation. Working at a startup is going to be living a little rough the next few years as uh, it's going to be more difficult for founders to get mm. mortgages. Uh, oh, no. So someone taking a risk and then taking massive money from other people can't buy a house in Silicon Valley? Oh, no. I feel so bad. You know, Brian, the Tenderloin branch of First Republic got hit really hard. That used to be in Francisco. <laughs> That Ouch. was a joke. There was no Tenderloin. Have you ever been to Tenderloin? I walked through it once and I saw World War III happening in front of my I, I walked eyes. through there one time at the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference dressed like this. I, I said to my friend, I'm like, why has no one kicked my own ass? I would kick my own ass if I saw me walking totally. there. Totally. I mean, they're Crazy. All fucking opioided out and fucking. Well, so was I at the time. Yeah. <laughs> it was a healthcare conference. What did you expect? <laughs> You're just getting a test for like. <laughs> I'm a doctor. You know, you got to try what they're doing. Okay, thank you, Purdue Pharma. Alibaba's co-founder disappeared for two years. Now he's back in the spotlight. Alibaba co-founder Jack Ma, who was once China's richest man, has joined Tokyo College. The Dragons, they have a great baseball team. Now, Ma will conduct research and teach about sustainable agriculture and food production. That sounds fascinating. He's been lying low for two years after angering Chinese regulators during a speech in which he criticized China's financial regulatory system and claimed the Chinese banks were operating a pawn shop mentality. Everybody loves to hate on American billionaires, but mm -hmm. let me tell you, at least we don't have the government there just ready to go and throw you into being a professor whenever they feel like it. It's uh, disappointing, honestly, for, uh, for, for Chinese entrepreneurship, for Chinese, mm -hmm. you know, wealth creators. But uh, hey, I guess you go send them across uh, over to Japan and let them start teaching the future of uh, Japanese. Well, it's interesting you say this. Send them across over to Japan, right? He's a Chinese national and he's teaching sustainable agriculture and food production, makes you think, makes you think what his motives are at the, at the Tokyo College. I haven't heard of that before. And it's funny I'm more of a University of Tokyo fan person. Yeah, all right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how he referred to the Chinese banks as operating like a pawn shop. I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of funny to see all these bank failures coming down. Are the, are the US banks pawn shops? I mean, what does that actually mean? <laughs> what does that mean? And why did they get so upset? You know, right. makes you wonder. I know. Yeah. I mean, also, he disappeared for two years. Well, Smash. he was lying low, lying you know, low, so low. the Chinese, yeah, what type of torture were they doing? That. I don't mm -mm. know. Seems sketch. Now, this next article uh, is a, a, a phallic. Is that how you, how do you pronounce that word? It's a penis. Oh. Phallic iceberg photo goes viral. So it's uh, in the shape of a dick for those who don't know what that is. Canadian photographer Ken Pretty, that's his name or his stage name, I don't know, who hails from the town of Dildo. You can't make this shit up. Was flying his drone when spotted. <laughs> he spotted a very interesting 30 foot iceberg off of Newfoundland's east coast. So Ken Pretty from the town of Bill. 
Ken Pretty from the town of Dildo said, you know, looking from the land, it was quite clear. But once I got the drone out there, that's when he really understood the, the, the girth of this, if you will. And sadly, the iceberg collapsed the day after Pretty took the photo. So uh, it, uh, it kind of went flaccid, if you will. It was the last erect photo of the iceberg that pretty from the town of Dildo Talk. Captured a Kodak moment there. It's almost as a vein too, if you look closely. Now, Brian, this is something very special to you. Near and dear to my heart. Vice, your former employer, they're preparing to file for bankruptcy. They have taken the steps to file for a possible bankruptcy if they cannot secure a buyer in the next few weeks. Back when you were there, they were valued at five, six, seven billion, but now they're struggling to sell themselves for more than a billion. It's unfortunate, it's sad. I love my former employer. I love all of the employees that contributed to the mm -hmm. place. However, you know, look, I think it's an emblematic of VC money and levering up a media company that, you know, didn't really potentially need that leverage. Um, you know, I had a blast working there and, uh, you know, hopefully this, uh, hopefully Vice ends up in the hands of somebody that uh, will be, a, you know, a, a suitor to help continue to allow amazing creative uh, content. Let to the get creators paid. create, Let I like to say, to you know. That's now, I would like to give a, a dating tip to my small but loyal following. Now, if you go to the Vice app and you go to the sex section of the stories, read a few of those before you go on a date, always makes for amazing conversation stars. That's great. Look, Vice has good content, as they you do. see. Great they documentaries. Do. When they investigate the uh, abandoned buildings and shit, Hell I take yeah. an edible, watch that, it's amazing. Yeah. Like, here's this yeah. mall in Ohio. No? Vice guy to North Korea. No, it was a blast working there, but ultimately a sad state. You saw that they cut Vice News a couple weeks ago. BuzzFeed News a big got watcher. canned. Yeah, Buzz, oh. BuzzFeed stock is trading below a dollar. Mm -hmm. They're looking at a delisting. So it's an unfortunate state of media right now, but hopefully this gives birth to a whole lot of other amazing creative media This companies. Week in Money. This Week in Money, Bullish Studio, Equity Animal, we're here fighting the good fight as bootstrapped companies. Can't be any more proud of what we've built. And um, I'm here because of my court order. IBM is pausing hiring, Mark's favorite topic of AI. I love AI. IBM has put a hold on hiring about 7,800 jobs because they feel like AI could take over. Uh, it's for non-customer facing roles and they feel like these jobs could be replaced by AI sometime in the next five years. Wasn't IBM the company with Watson, the supercomputer yeah. that, that was doing, he was doing all the little surgeries back like since 2013. So they just blew the fucking lead. Like where's Watson now? Where is Watson now? Let me ask you. And according to someone on Twitter, he is giving BBLs, which is a Brazilian butt lift in the Dominican Republic. So you know what? Watson, who uh, I, I hate him because he beat my boy Ken Jennings, but uh, who I think actually, who would you take? Ken Jennings in a battle of AI or, or whatever chat? Ken Jennings, yeah. you know? Fuck AI. Uh -huh. Do you see that joke that the, the GBT made where it was GBT. like, it was like eating a chicken nugget, eating a chicken nugget with an erection? Chegg stock falls as chat GPT continues to dominate. Online education company Chegg stock plummeted after reporting Q1 earnings this Tuesday. Shares dropped more than 40% after the company said chat GPT is killing its business. My biggest question is why would you say it's killing your business instead of we're investing in AI, in chat GPT, whatever Get the, the narrative see. down. You got to understand mm -hmm. how to communicate to your shareholders mm -hmm. and the market. People are looking for opportunities in Something AI. Something Equity Animal can help with. Chegg was a darling for a while. They were ripping the for The textbook many, many rental years. company. It's a you know? crazy business. It's if like you even look at it, bucks. Yeah. It's crazy. And all these professors require you to get the textbooks. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of the internet? Yeah, it's dumbass. Such a, it's such a little like... Jack Ma is like, take my class on organic science and totally Tokyo or some shit. Use use my check. He's probably gonna kick back. Yeah. Yo, the college textbook market has been like this wild market. Mm. Like why all the professors mm. like make it like require it. They definitely have been getting kickbacks. Definitely. Scholastic definitely. And all those yeah. other companies. Whoa, dude. You, I've never felt richer than walking in a Scholastic book fair with 20 bucks. It's like, <laughs> I'm getting two posters. I'm getting like a Captain Underpants book. I'm going fucking off. You know, I got a question, Brian, about Chegg and ChatGPT. How is this going to affect the homeschool market? Are they still going to be weird as fuck or what's going to happen to them? Dude. Can you cheat in homeschool? I don't know. I've never met a normal person who I, From homeschool, to homeschool, I think that they have, they, they got to get in front of other, other kids. We right? need to you socialize. Gotta, we need gotta, to help them. We need to liberate the homeschoolers. Is what we need to do. That's it. That's that is. You should run a. You should run a campaign on that. Uh -huh. the homeschoolers. Yeah. I wonder what the voting population is of those. Um. Groups. Well, they don't let women vote, from my understanding. So you know, <laughs> they tend to be you know more fundamentalist Christians. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So it sounds like a good audience to tap into. They vote, right? They love to vote. They love to vote. Vote early and vote often, as my <laughs> Irish friends in Chicago say. <laughs> 
Now, Brian, before we end this week in money, I'd like to encourage everyone to come out to Rick's shareholder meeting on Wednesday the 10th at the club on West 33rd, where you can see me and Brian deploy our own capital allocation strategies. Speaking of Rick's, we've got a little surprise in store, something big coming soon. The Rick's online store is gonna be opening. It's like QVC, but for a strip club merchandise. We're gonna have a variety of items from this strip club owner hat to a free cash flow hat, dollar sign R-I-C-K on the back. This is an Adam Wyden edition Tootsies, but my favorite, I love Jordan stuff, so I uh, took inspiration from the Jordan logo, and now we have a stripper on a pole as a logo. So we only have the hats and mugs in right now, but we're gonna have a broad variety of merchandise from sweatshirts to phone cases to t-shirts to trucker hats to anything you may need to show your support to empower all of our favorite strippers, whether it's Fierce Aphrodite 7 in Tootsies or any of the beautiful ladies at Rick's in New York. Come by on Wednesday to see more. Look, I don't own the whole thing. Have I told uh, individuals at the club that I own the club? But it's Potentially. real, you do own it. Potentially. You own a Potentially. share of the company. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the American stock market. You're Welcome to the owners. capitalist system of America. That's why the stock market was created to allow everyday Americans to share in the wealth and prosperity of us, uh, of all the American companies that exist. So, uh, Mark and Brian, two everyday Americans here on This Week in Money. Support Until your next local week. stock. Support thank your local stock. Thank you for coming. We'll see you again. We want next you to week come on This Week in Money. See you again next week. Come. <laughs>